you have been disputing this charge off completely wrong the entire time. Stop disputing the balance on a charge off. You've been watching all these videos from all these people out there telling you, dispute the amount on a charge off. It's not supposed to report a balance. They have to delete it in 30 days. And then you sent out a letter and you're sitting there like, okay, it didn't get deleted. Well, guess what? One, it ain't gonna happen overnight. Two, it's completely wrong, completely wrong. Or my favorite, if you have a charge off and you disputed the balance and they didn't delete it, file a complaint with the CFPB. That'll also get it deleted. That's also wrong. CFPB doesn't have the power to delete something. So understand that, okay? And really what's happening is all these people are causing all these people to send in all these letters into the CFPB and it's causing a very big problem for the CFPB. It's actually not helping you. So let's cover on how to handle a charge off and maybe we can potentially help you build a case against them. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike the Credit Guy, the biggest. If this is your first time to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That way you find out every time we drop new content, you're gonna hear about it first. We talk about everything credit here. So if you haven't already, hit that like button, that little like button. That way this video goes out to way more people, okay? In case you didn't know, I am the owner and founder of Limitless Culture. We created the most advanced DIY program in the industry. At $55.99 a month, our system will create custom Metro 2 attack letters, attacking any negative items on your credit reports and all your personal information that's not accurate. Imagine that. Our system will create your letters, email them to you, you print them, you mail them out, certified mail, and you're done. It's just that simple. You don't have to join any Facebook groups, you know, those archaic things. You don't have to read any modules. You don't have to do any master courses. We cut all that nonsense out. Our system will create those custom letters, email them to you, you print them, you mail them out, certified mail, and you're done. Link is always going to be in the description for our DIY program, the most advanced in the industry. People really want you to think that there's all these special letters and these special codes and these USCC code this and USCC code that that's going to get a charge off off your credit report. A charge off is the highest level of delinquency that you can have on a credit report. So this is why it is very difficult to delete if it's even possible to delete, okay? This is the thing that a lot of people do not want you to know about credit repair, but I'm gonna tell you the honest truth, okay? I've been doing this for over a decade and a half. I've used different tactics, different ways, and I started just like you way back in the, way back in the day, we were using template letters when template letters were actually effective they're becoming more and more less effective because e Oscar's hip to all these letters that they're getting. The only thing that we've seen really beat charge-offs are two things, the legal system and Metro 2 compliance attacking, okay? But it's very important to understand that you need to stop disputing specific attributes. And what do I mean by an attribute? The, late, the last date of activity, the last date of payment, the balance, all those are attributes that are on a credit report on that specific item. Stop disputing them and go directly to the creditor. Yes, that's right, I said the creditor. I want you to understand one very important thing. If you start to get into any type of credit repair process, it is not an overnight sensation. It is not gonna be some wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and you're done. No, it doesn't work like that. A lot of people like to tell you, you should be done in six months. Really? Really? It took you six months for this item to turn into a charge off. Why would you think it's gonna be so easy to delete? Think about it like this. If you had an account and it was probably on your credit report for four years, five years, seven years, even one year or two years, you just think you're gonna delete that historical information overnight? Or my favorite, you sent out one letter and it didn't get deleted, why not? So you have to understand that you're in this for the long game. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint, okay? Because you have a certain amount of chances that you have to attack this item. Depending on the program that you're using, everyone's system is different, okay? So you need to understand that when you start to attack or dispute or you go into any credit repair process, this is not a overnight sensation. There's no smoking gun letter that's gonna delete everything. And it's really hard for people to understand that. But you have to remember, you got yourself in this mess 
and now you're going to try to work to see if you can fix it because there's no guarantee when you're working on your credit and that's what a lot of consumers find hard and they just don't understand because everyone's like what's the guarantee the guarantee is um we're gonna see what can happen <laughs> because anybody that's telling you i guarantee you that we're gonna get your score to here or there they're full of it okay there's no way to know exactly what's gonna happen in the process until it happens because there are no two credit files that are alike. You can have one person that only has a couple of collections and one charge off or maybe just one collection. Or you have someone that spent their entire life destroying their credit and they have no positive credit and they have nothing but charge offs and collections more than 12 negative accounts. There's so many different things that can happen on a credit report and this is why it's impossible to tell a person how long it's gonna take even if you're just working on it by yourself on your own and you have no idea what you're doing. You're not gonna know how long it's gonna take. This is not financial advice or legal advice. I am not an attorney. Now, if you have a charge off on your credit report, that means the original creditor, okay, whether that be for a credit card or a loan or any type of you know um, credit product and it's marked charged off, that means that they have taken a loss for the item and they're going to be reporting it to the IRS as a loss. Now, some people will start to get 1099s around tax season. That's when we see them start to usually go out. Every bank is different. Not every bank sends a letter with a 1099. So if this is in fact a true charge off, then why did the original creditor never send you a 1099? That makes no sense, right? Because if they're going to report it as a loss, then they should send you a 1099. Now there's different types of 1099 based on the tax code and how they exactly wrote it off. It's gonna have a specific letter and coding on it, okay? But you need to communicate with the original creditor in a very simple and easy process by sending them a very simple letter. You don't have to write any UCC codes or, or try to murk this up. You want to be clear and precise into what you're saying and what you're requesting when you're talking to an original creditor because you want to request them to send you an actual 1099 say hey hey mr creditor it appears that you have turned this item on my credit report into a charge off but i never received the 1099 can you be so kind to send me a 1099 for this actual item that has charged off due to my financial hardship make it very simple okay don't use any crazy jargon you want to get straight to the point and get them to give you that 1099 whenever you're communicating with a direct creditor original creditor always make sure to send your letter certified mail and hit that like button now there's a couple of different types of certified mail that you can do okay Always make sure that you do, the bare minimum is certified mail when you're trying to do this because you want to track your records, make copies of your letters all the time, okay? But if you can, make sure that you do return receipt. It is a little bit more expensive. It can take it all the way up to, I think it's like $9 or something like that. But return receipt, what they're gonna do is you fill out this little green form, and then once they receive it, they're gonna sign it. Then they're actually gonna mail the form back to you. And then when you get that form, you're gonna save it because that's gonna tell you, guess what? They signed for it, they received it, and you know they got it. Usually it'll take about 30 to 35 days for them to um, respond to your request for this 1099. Now you're gonna wait and see exactly what they're gonna say. But always remember, last part's most important. In case you haven't noticed, there is a button underneath my video that says donate. That is for Nicole's wish. So now this is pretty awesome what we've been doing with this. I started a fundraiser to help donate to Nicole's wish that is granting wishes for children with critical illnesses. Now this is pretty awesome, whether it be a dollar, five dollars, two dollars, or some of you big ballers bust out your wallets. This is your time to flex your money on Make-A-Wish, okay? This is pretty awesome. So what Nicole's Wish does is they take all that money and they donate it into, into Make-A-Wish and they help grant wishes. Now, I'll put it up right here so you can see it. We have already granted five wishes. We have seven wishes that are pending and 12 wishes that have been adopted. That's pretty awesome. So anything you can do is gonna be pretty awesome. I mean, what more could we ask for? We're gonna help make some kids wishes come true. All right, so let's say you got your 1099 in the mail from the actual original creditor. They sent it in the mail. Now people are gonna try to debunk to say, oh my God, no, it's taxable income now. Yes, correct. 
it does turn into taxable income. But there's something called Form 982 of the IRS. It is a form of insolvency. That means that your debts are larger than your assets. More than 90% of Americans are insolvent. That means they're carrying larger debts than their assets, okay? So get your tax professional to take your 1099 and then tell them I would like to use Form 982 of insolvency. They're gonna have you fill out this form, write, write down your debts versus your assets, and then the, what will happen is the IRS will waive this. It's up to the IRS to choose, okay? So I'm not gonna say that you're automatically insolvent. It's not what I'm gonna say. But again, more than 90% of Americans are insolvent in fact, okay? So make sure to fill out that form properly with a tax professional. Some people are savvy, they can do it on their own, whatever, that's your choice. But this can help you get rid of that debt once you receive it from the actual creditor. That's step number one, once you've received it. So now you have your 1099, you file your form 982 of insolvency with the IRS, so now you're insolvent, the debt's been wiped away, forgiven, you don't have to worry about it. What do you do next? Okay, this is really important. The reason why you don't dispute that amount, you don't dispute the account first, is because now the balance is still reporting, correct? When the 1099 is filled out and it is actually filed, that means the debt is extinguished. It's finito. It's gone. It's no mas. It doesn't exist anymore. Now you have a legitimate dispute against the actual credit bureaus because guess what? Hold on, hold on. Original creditor, you filed a 1099, but yet you're reporting a balance. The debt is distinguished. It's gone. So how is it possible for you to report this charge off with the balance? You're still saying that this money is owed. Guess what? It's not because the debt is gone, okay? So now you're going to file a very simple dispute with the actual credit bureau. In this letter to the credit bureau, you're going to keep it very simple. You do not have to overcomplicate this, okay? You're going to put your name, your address, your date of birth, the last four of your social, and the date that you're making the letter, and then whatever credit bureau's name and their address. You're gonna say, hey, credit bureaus, I was looking at my credit report and this account looks weird to me. The last date of activity, the last date of payment, the account number, the balance, everything on this credit item on my credit report looks to be incorrect. Can you please delete this item from my credit report because it is not accurate and it's not complete. Send it out certified mail. You can sign it at the very bottom you know, people that say don't sign it because they're gonna have you you can sign the letter to the credit bureaus okay send a certified mail with return receipt and then wait 35 to 45 days maximum for the credit bureau's response so you got a response from the credit bureau saying it's verified and they sent you all these documents telling you this item does belong to you and it is verified we didn't ask that we didn't say it didn't belong to us right so you're gonna save those copies. It's very important that you save the copies of the responses from the actual credit bureaus. Now in your second response letter, you're going to state very simply, I sent you a letter on so-and-so date that told you that I believe this information is not accurate and, and is not complete. Please reinvestigate this because the way it appears on my credit report, it does not appear to be accurate or complete. And then you're gonna list the account number, date of last activity, date of last payment, the balance. All of these items do not appear to be accurate. Please reinvestigate this and delete it from my credit report effective immediately. Thank you for your cooperation. Send it certified mail with the return receipt again and then wait 35 days. This is where it gets really good. So after you received your second response, more than likely they're gonna say, it's verified. We're not going to reinvestigate this unless you have proper documentation showing us that it is not accurate. All right, great. So now you have built a case against the credit bureaus. You don't need three rounds, honestly, but if you want to, you can send a third round. You can say, this is my final warning that I have explicitly explained to you that this item is not accurate and it's not complete. And I've given you two chances to delete this from my credit report. You have continued to report it. The date of last activity, the date of last payment, the account number, the, la the balance,
balance that's reporting, all of these items do not appear to be accurate or complete, and you chose to not delete them. This is your final warning to delete it from my credit report effective immediately. While you're sitting at home with your 1099C and this debt is extinguished, you're just waiting for them to respond again to say it's verified. Now, if they send it after a third time and they say it's verified also, you have built a solid case against the credit bureaus. Imagine that, look at what we just did. Now, if you successfully follow all these steps and you have all of your letters sent certified with return receipt, and you do in fact get the actual 1099C, okay, or 1099, because it's not always a 1099C, it depends on the debt, okay, and how they wrote it off. If, if you get your 1099 and you have proof that they didn't delete it after you sent them three rounds of letters, guess what? You have built a case and send your information to us, okay, at contact at limitlessculturegroup.com. Again, contact at limitlessculturegroup.com and we can get your file to a legal team for a free legal review at no cost to you. Imagine that, okay? I'm just helping change people's lives every day. That's what I do, okay? So, again, you're building a case against the credit bureaus. If you could do this successfully, you can go after the actual creditor, okay, that wrote this off, but guess what? Still reporting a balance. Imagine that. Credit bureaus not doing their jobs, creditors not doing their jobs. You got to have to catch them in the act. You got to have to, that doesn't even make sense. You have to catch them in the act, okay? Um, it's really important that you follow those steps to a T, okay? Because you want to build a case and a legal team can take that. They can review, re review your file for free. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to attack a charge off, okay? And potentially get you some free legal representation. Now, make sure to watch these next two videos because they are recommended by YouTube. And first off, I wanna tell you thank you for being amazing subscribers. And if you haven't, make sure to subscribe to increase your credit score.